Hello everyone and welcome back. Coco is here and I'm continuing Cinders and I'm once more here at the title screen since once again when I exited out I got in a little achievement and you can see here that Cinders dress has changed since apparently I looked marvelous at the ball. Dude, let me check this rewards. Trophies are awarded for in-game achievement. The riddle is, what do you have to do to get them? So I think this first one right here is the look at great at the ball. Then this one right here. No. No, this one over here. On the... You probably can't see my cursor. After the skull is the look great at the ball. Then we got the candle of wisdom. I think the f what the was this one? That was probably like make your first decision or start the game, something like that. Now I'm wondering what all these others are. The skull is probably obviously a path in which we die, and the last one is the second one's probably we become queen. I don't know what the last one would be, or the p poison vial of poison. Probably another way to die. Well, we shall see. Let's jump back in. Hopefully I won't get Flemmy again. I don't know why that's been happening. I can't recall it happening with this much frequency in the past. To be honest, I am pretty powerless. Being a prince mostly entitles me to living in a more comfortable quarters than, say, the town's innkeeper. But I don't get even a fraction of his power. But assuming I were a king already, what would you have me do, my lady? What changes would satisfy subtle tastes of a learned modern woman such as you? I may have read a few books, but I'm not a politician. I can speak generally of injustices that require mending, or errors which need to be corrected. I believe the kingdom would benefit from reforms in a more modern style of government. What do you... That wording didn't seem all that great since the prince already mentioned how there aren't any places doing this sort of... sort of, uh, rule. There's only writing about it, so it's kind of... I don't know if stating it as modern would really be the way a person who has very little... Ex has no experience of it and very little knowledge of it would refer to it. Isn't that a polite way of saying that monarchy is obsolete? Not necessarily. An enlightened ruler may balance novelty and freedom with stability and tradition. As long as he keeps those who could threaten him either too satisfied or too afraid to rise up against him. Against him or her, I would add. Yes, gender plays no role in such matters. At least here we have some equity. I must admit you are an intriguing woman, my lady. Very different from the rest of the people who came here today. They don't seem to be even slightly bothered by the masks they have to wear. I wonder if it's so because they wear them every single day as well. But you are different. You may be wearing a mask, but you speak to me plainly and honestly, risking being misunderstood or simply rejected. I can appreciate that, even if you did leave me a bit flabbergasted. I know exactly what you mean, Your Highness. Being raised in a place filled with deceit and spite, I learned very well the value of masks. When threatened, people will rather forget who they are than risk being hurt, and if their surroundings will require it, they will lose themselves forever, only to survive. We are all slaves to convention, from a servant to a lord. I must admit, I find the dictum terrifying. That all of us are merely actors on the stage set out for us. Be it others or a fate, being determined by things we can't control is frightening. I know it all too well. You speak of your family. I am. It isn't a light story, your highness. 
Definitely not a topic for a polite and charming conversation to make the time pass more pleasantly. I would like to hear about it, nevertheless, if I am not asking for too much. Please, tell me about your family, my lady. How could I refuse you, my prince? Well, my mother died in labor, bringing me into this world. My father eventually remarried to a woman who already had two daughters. He died soon after that, so now I live with a stepmother and her two daughters. That is strange. I've never heard of a noble house with three daughters and no father. I recall one family of a widow with two daughters, though. How is it possible, my lady? Car, I mean, stepmother doesn't see me as one of her daughters. She allows me to stay in her house under one condition. I work as a servant for bed and board. Those who are familiar with the family know of my existence. As for others, I wouldn't be surprised if she told everyone she has two daughters, and that is that. That's unbelievable. I did warn you about this topic. It isn't very entertaining. No, I'm glad you've told me about it. It showed me how ignorant I still am, and how little I know about my own realm. Well, in that case, I'm glad you asked me about my life. Look at me babbling like a lunatic. You must be wondering whatever happened to royal manners. I forced you to speak about things which you must find very painful during a ball. When we're supposed to be taking our minds off on pleasant things. Please allow me to make amends. Would you do me the honor? Oh, I'm not really a dancer. Don't worry, my lady. I will show you. Alright. Maybe I can learn something from you as well, my prince. Is this alright? You're doing fine, my lady. This isn't as difficult as I expected. Not that I had expected to be dancing with you, my prince. And yet here we are. It feels very natural, too. Who knows? Maybe it was fate that brought the two of us together. Fate? What is that really brought me here? And what is it that really brought me here tonight? Do you truly believe it was some mystical force? I can imagine getting here must have been difficult for you, considering your situation. To put it mildly, yes. But I wouldn't call it fate, my prince. To the contrary, if it was up to fate, I'd be cleaning the dishes this very moment. No, your highness. The only reason I'm here is because I do not believe in any force other than my own ability to influence the world around me. I choose to shape my life in any way that I can and take responsibility for the consequences of my actions. Having it any other way is cowardice. A commendable attitude, my lady. This may not be the wisest thing to say at the moment, but I'll say it anyway. I consider myself lucky to have met you tonight, my lady. Luck or not, I'm glad as well. Very glad to be here with you, Prince. Have I complimented your eyes already? Strange, I can't seem to remember. Neither can I. Let's assume you haven't. I can't get enough of looking into them. They have these amazing dancing sparks inside them. They suit you more than well. They speak of wit and intelligence. Now I'm sure you haven't complimented in my eyes. <laughs> Please do continue. What else do you find attractive? Ugh, I hate it when people do that. I will, then. I adore watching your lips as well. They move so gracefully when you speak, as if conveying a promise. And what promise do you read from them? I dare not say it. Let's move on. Your neck... Skip the neck, Prince. What about my chest? Ugh, this is getting weird. Chest is not the word I'd use. And what word would you prefer? I... I think we should get to know each other better before we switch to a more colloquial vernacular. 
I'd love to get to know you better, my lady. You will have your chance, my prince, if you're persistent enough and constant in your ambition. No, he won't. We're out of here. But... We tend to undervalue things we achieved effortlessly. Let me give you an obstacle, my prince. You may thank me later. <laughs> you really are incredible, my lady. And you won't have it any other way, my lord. Good night, and thank you for this unforgettable evening. Mother, is that... Well, I'll be... Cinders? Carmosa? Girls? Are you enjoying the ball? I certainly am. Demons take me. Aren't you a clever little creature, my dear Cinders? Not only did you somehow manage to get here. Look at that dress. Yes, I can see it. Thank you, Gloria. You also had a little dance with the prince who clearly took an interest in you. You spoke with him like you were enjoying yourself. Which means you achieved more than either of my daughters and you did it without my help. I'm impressed. You always underestimated me, Carmosa. You failed to understand that if I put my heart into something, I can succeed at many things. You speak of adolescent bravado, and yet you did succeed. You did very well. I was clearly mistaken about you. Cinders, you were really amazing. Not bad. Not bad at all. Thanks. So, what are you going to do now? Got any more surprises for the evening? If you do, then please warn us in advance or someone may have a heart attack. Surprises? Well, what do you expect me to do? I'll just head back home. I got what I wanted, right? Besides, these shoes are killing me. What are they even made of? Blasted thing. It's the one it's the left one that almost cut my skin. Let's see if I can send you flying over the wall, shall we? There, and stay there. I'll be going now. Take care, ladies. And there she went. Well, I'd say this has been an entertaining and very educational experience. What do you think, Gloria? Yes, I think I did learn something about myself. All of us, actually. Would you agree, Mother? A mistake. Looks like someone has just been hit with a revelation. Too bad it wasn't sooner. Good evening, Lady Carmosa. Ladies, I'm looking for Cinders. Do you know where I could find her? My lady? Cinders is not here, Captain. Could you tell us why you are looking for her? Royal orders. The prince would like to have a word with her. Cinders just left, Captain. She seemed to be in a hurry, too, as if trying to get... Back home before midnight. Funny, since Mother's here and she wasn't supposed to be here at all, it isn't like she needs to make it before the curfew or anything. If that lovely dress was as terrible as her shoes, maybe she just wanted to get back home and take it off as soon as possible. Her shoes? Yes, slippers. Very original design, too. She said they were awfully uncomfortable and threw one over the wall. The other one is still here on the ground. Slippers. Huh, is this the beginning of the game? I still can't believe she did it. I would never suspect. 
Of course, because everyone's as dim-witted as you are and never does anything out of the ordinary or unexpected. Oh yes, I'm sure you were able to foresee this precisely as it happened. Did you see it in tea leaves, or read it in a children's book one afternoon while avoiding work and being useless as usual? I did entertain the thought she might do something like this, if you must know. But believe what you want, I don't care. I too suspected she might try to do something unthinkable. She was so secretive and compliant at times. I suppose it could point to an inevitable explosion. I just didn't expect she had it in her. Gloria, please. Sometimes you sound like a cliché villain from a bad romance novel. Of course, if something's not twisted, weird, or shocking, you won't consider it honest. Not everyone is like you, Sophia. I know not everyone is. You're not. Though you try hard to be like Mother, and acting the same role no matter the situation. Predictable, boring, stupid. But you are not Carmosa, remember? You do not lead, you mindlessly follow, and it shows. Shut up, you! Open up! Open up in the name of the prince! It's him! Why did he have to come, and in the middle of the night? Will the wonders never cease? I guess the night of change is not over yet, just as your ridiculous cliché impersonations. There's no time for this now, though I'm sure Mother will deal with you later. I'll go summon her. You do that. Open up! I won't repeat myself! Why are you being so urgent, dude? Mother. Sophia, don't stand like that. Open the door. Let this noisy man in. Yes, Mother. Ah, Captain. What brings you here at this time of the night? Spare me these false pleasantries. You know why I'm here. Where is she? <clears throat> Very well, Sophia. Get Cinders here right away. Yes, Mother. Be quick about it, child. Captain, would you fancy some wine while we wait for my lazy stepdaughter? Don't push it. You know this is not a courtesy visit. I'm afraid a lot is going to change here tonight. I've brought cinders. Good evening, Captain. What a surprise to see you here. It shouldn't be. Were you present at the Grand Ball tonight? Now answer me honestly. I... Cinders. Yes. Yes, I was, Captain. Then I'm afraid I must arrest you. What? What for? Bloody... I can't believe it. But why? She did nothing wrong. Attendance without a proper formal invitation is a serious breach of security and is considered an, as action endangering the prince. Well, well. Attendance without a genuine invitation. Cinders, how could he have done such a thing? But I haven't done anything to endanger the prince. Surely you must take that into consideration when you decide my case. I don't know what your reasons were, but that it is to come out during questioning. Royal justice has never been known for its soft approach to traitors, my dear. Lady Carmosa, please refrain from commenting. I would like to make this as easy as possible for everyone. Very well, girls. Let's this man do his duty. I wasn't saying anything, you old hag. But Cinders, why did you do it? Breaking the law doesn't sound quite like you. I guess it's not too late to wonder about that now, isn't it, Captain? I never could quite understood her. And now she has simply crossed the line. 
pot me kettle. If you must take her, take her. Know that this house respects the royal law. Cinders, I'm going to arrest you now. Don't do anything stupid. I'll escort you from here and make sure everything is as it should be. Oh, but we have to still be here. You'll be fine, I promise. You are very fine, Captain, but there is no need to that. She is accustomed to hard treatment, so she'll manage. Let us not forget she did endanger the prince. Yes, I can see what one may or may not be accustomed to here. Would anyone else like to try to tell me how to do my job? Good. Cinders, are you ready? How can I be ready for my own arrest? But yes, do what you must. I get the feeling you might be the lucky one, Cinders, actually breaking free from all this family business. If the guard asks you whether you're ready to be arrested, I want to trade places with you. Sophia! Can we go now, Captain? Ah, oh, we're not gonna be here when Geed's person comes to pick us up. In the name of the Prince, I am arresting you. Now follow me. Good night, ladies. Captain? What's going to happen to her? It was so rash of her to break the law. Gloria, you are officially a cliché idiot. Besides, wasn't all that unusual? I mean, like, I'm pretty sure we're not actually being arrested. He's just picking us up for the prince. But, yeah. So I guess that's it. Or, wait, I'm... No, I'm the idiot. He is. He is Geed's trusted person. <laughs> so I guess that's it. Do you know what to do next? What? Do you know what to do next? What do you mean? I'm free. Of course, I was supposed to escort you to the crossroads safely. And from here on, you travel wherever you want. You seem surprised. Of course I'm surprised. Just a short while ago, you were arresting me. I'm not being arrested, am I? No, you're not. Did you honestly think that I would arrest you? I had my doubts. Something to do with you thumping against my door in the middle of the night, yelling something in the name of the prince? My duty ended when the bells struck midnight. I am not arresting anyone in his highness' name anymore. I'm so sorry. Don't be. You are free to go anywhere you want and follow your dreams. That is a good reason for joy. It is. However, it doesn't show because I am terrified out of my mind a few minutes ago. That actually worked to your advantage. Your terror made the arrest look much more genuine. That's true. I don't think anyone realized you were doing it for my benefit. Why are you helping me? Don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful. It's just quite unexpected. Our mutual friend seems rather insistent in the matter. You mean... I don't know how, but you have won Madame Guide over. She was quite intent on arranging your escape precisely. Oh, it does make sense. But I'm surprised you agreed. Aren't you big on law and order? She is one person I can't say no to. I owe her way too much to refuse, even if the request did sound weird at best. Besides, what use is the law if it serves to make someone innocent unhappy? So I've heard you're expecting someone. What do you mean? From what I understand, someone was to meet you here. You're not escaping to travel alone, are you? I'm actually hoping to travel in a party of two. There she comes! Captain, what a surprise. I thought you'd be long gone by now. You're not off for just an hour to get bread rolls from what I've heard. How could I miss the opportunity to say goodbye? I don't recall you putting so much value on etiquette, or goodbyes for that matter. 
Need I remind you, the last one might have been appropriate. The last time one might have been appropriate. I don't think it's the parting of ways that should be remembered, but what happened beforehand. Don't you? Most of the time, but sometimes the way you finish it is equally important. That's why I'm here, to say goodbye and to see you and your new girl off. I hope we'll meet again someday. Hey, what do you mean by new girl? <laughs> Did I say something I shouldn't have? It doesn't matter. Cinders, what matters is whether this is the life you want. Do you still choose this path? Of course. This is my dream, you know that. I want to see what's around the next corner. I want to learn from it, play or steal it. Whatever I might think best at the moment. So yes, I am choosing freedom. Freedom to do whatever I deem worthy and to explore the world. And I am glad to have such a good companion and guide as yourself. And with that you have sealed your path. Come, let's not keep the world waiting. Goodbye, my friend. May good fortune smile upon you. Good luck, Captain. I will remember you. Fondly. Travel safely, ladies. A few hours earlier. Oh god, not this guy again. It's you. What do you want? Charming as usual, love. Never big on those social niceties. Guess I can't blame. What do you want? Me? Oh, you know me. I want nothing. I have everything I need. Except some information about that pet project of yours, maybe? Listen to me, old man. I have no time to play your games. Ask me and be gone. The girl, love. The little girl... The little bird who wanted to fly free from her cage. Her? She's none of your business. I'd advise you to stay away from her. None of my business? Even after the small, if not crucial, part I played in her personal drama? Even if you must admit that I was a bloody good supportive actor, eh? That's supporting, and yes, you had your part in all this. Alright, it doesn't really matter now anyway. If you must know, it is all going well. I'll keep the word I gave to Cinder's mother and help her achieve the goal she chose for herself. Will you, love? That's a tad unlike the geed I remember, bending this gal's path according to your own whim, playing her like she was your doll. Weren't you always the one with a mouth full of nice, those nice words like independence? Not so big on practicing what you preach, though. Oh well, me thinks it was, must be difficult to let people make up their own mind when there's so little time, and you were in a hurry to run as usual, eh, Geed? I see what you're trying to do here, and it isn't working. I help the girl with making her own decisions. It is hers, as will be the consequences. <laughs> Some achievement, that is. The girl's born pretty as a picture, smart as a demon, and protected by friends her mother made and bound by a dying wish. Now that's a mighty fine start for being independent and making one's own decisions. Bitterness takes the better of you, old man. That it is, madame, that it is. Guess freedom ain't what it used to be, eh, love? Cinders broke from her stepmother's clutches and paved a new path for herself. Now she is truly free to do whatever she wishes with the rest of her life. In my book, that's a success. Love. Nah, you don't really believe she can keep up that stout pose for long now, do you, love? We both know what will happen when all her crutches leave her. No Carmosa to blame and no mysterious friend to look up to. The bird will get swept in the wind. But you fulfilled the promise given to her mother so your conscience is free. Be gone, Snake. I've had enough of your chatter. 
Oh, careful now, love. You don't make the same impression when your voice is all shaky. I must have hit a soft spot underneath all that pretty armor, eh? I need to pack. I'll be leaving soon. Now let me be. Yes, run. Show us the strong and independent spirit you really are. You'll run out of you'll run out of cities one day. Hmm. Oh, ending. Finding happiness and freedom in her own birthplace was not meant to be for Cinders. Sick of her life and her stepmother's games, she decided that the only way to find peace is to escape the town and start her life over. Though her travels don't spare her hardships, she finds the sense of her newly found freedom invigorating and is ready to take whatever life throws at her. At least she's not alone with Madame Guide at her side. The witch won't ever admit that, but she has hap she's happy to have found a true and witty friend in Cinders. Finally, she has someone she can share her travels with, someone worthy of bestowing with her knowledge. They lead the life of traveling wise women, often persecuted or misunderstood, but free and welcomed by those who need their services. She thinks of her old family sometimes, but receives no news about their circumstances. She can't help but wonder what happened to Lady Carmosa and her daughters. These moments of nostalgia quickly pass, though, when she realizes that she lives a new life now, one that would be impossible if she decided to stay. Oh, is this to start over? Well, you know what? That's that ending. And quite frankly, for me, I am incredibly pleased with this ending. The conversation between Shady Character and Geed was a very interesting one. And I think Shady Character brought up a lot of very interesting points. But it was a very pessimistic point. He was assuming that Cinders would automatically fail in being able to keep herself upright if Madame Geed were to leave or if any other thing were to happen. But first of all, not only did Madame Guide apparently stay with her, but it's very possible that Cinders would still have been able to manage on her own, even without any crutches. So, I mean, I think he's wrong, but I'm actually pretty impressed that he was that considerate. And it makes me think that there's much more to him than just this. The fact that he was never given a name, in fact, is also very telling. That is it for Cinders. I liked the I liked the um more recent scenes than the first. I mean, you've already heard me say this several times, but the game is it's very heavy-handed and then it continues to repeat that exact same heavy-handedness again and again and again and again. The game seemed much more concerned with using its characters to give a message than telling a story. Like, the story itself should be able to tell the message without treating its audience like an idiot, which this game unfortunately did a lot. But, I mean, I still enjoyed it overall. There's, there's still a lot to like, and I am curious to see what happens in other paths. But anywho, that'll be it. Thank you guys for joining, and see you next time. Phase 1 Celia's Tale, The Maiden of the Holy Staff. Whoa, it has animated scenes? What? <sighs> hey, you're skipping service? Elda's gonna get mad! Oh, shut up. It's so boring. Huh? Huh? strange clothes. Who is he?
She doesn't Besides, care. Besides, even if I do pray, it won't ever change anything. Hey, you call yourself a cleric? Whatever, it's too nice to stay inside. It's a shame to waste such a nice day. Huh? What the... Why's the... No! Ah! No! <laughs> yeah, what a nice day, huh? So much for a nice day. 